Welcome, welcome, welcome to this new video. This time I want to talk to you about two different sys internal tools. The first one is auto runs, as I already have it open here on my desktop computer. But before I jump into it, there's something that I forgot to mention to you. And it is when you download the tools, you are going to notice that once you unzip it and you go to the tools folder, you're going to have two versions of it, right? For instance, right here we have auto log on and auto log on 64. Just make sure that you run the corresponding version of the file depending on your CPU architecture. If you're running a 64-bit uh, OS and CPU, then you use auto, auto log on 64 or the 64 version of the tool. Or if you're running an x86, then you run the regular name tool for that. <clears throat> so I figured that I would mention that because I don't believe I did. So uh, let's go back to auto runs. Now, this is an amazing tool for many different reasons, right? Uh, one of them is that it's going to allow you to see everything that is running, automatically running on your system at any given time. But not only that, you should say, you know what, like I could get this information from Task Manager, and it's true, you could get it from Task Manager, at least some of it. But what is very useful about this is that you have the option of filtering the view on Windows, on, on, on uh, Windows uh, files or Microsoft files, or you can only see whatever is third party. And that's what you may be interested in when troubleshooting or monitoring a system, right? Like if you've noticed, if I come down here, it says if, if I hover over the Microsoft icon, it says hide Microsoft entries. So yes, I want to hide them. If I hover over the uh, this other icon, it says hide Windows entries. So once I do that, whenever that happens, I'm going to be left with only those entries that have been added by third parties. And as you could see, like that is a very useful information that you could uh, uh, look into. Uh, you can also use this tool to identify any malicious files or malicious programs that are running persi with persistence on your computer and with persistence means that they are constantly running even after you reboot right and many i would say most malware runs in that way so that that is to create a, a persistent state of access for the uh, remote uh, connection to come into your computer so once you do that, you know, this is not working for me. Maybe that my system is, is acting out. But you have the option of um, selecting, uh, just hiding the Microsoft right here. Okay, so I'm, t I'm left with the, all the third parties. So how you use that, I mean, it all depends on your specific environment. If you are a security analyst, for instance, where you have to do threat hunting, and you and part of your job responsibilities is to analyze any suspicious activity or any suspicious files in the systems and in the networks you would use this is one of the tools that you would use as part of your tool set it's not going to be the only one but it's one of the many that you will use to get the information that you need 
and as you can see you can also even go into the different tabs right here you know like this is the default action it says everything you're gonna see everything right here or you could say I just want to see what's in the logon right so that's gonna show you whatever is happening at logon or in Explorer that's gonna show you whatever is happening in Explorer if there's any scheduled task you are going to see them right here and that's going to allow you to do further investigation into your system the other useful thing is that you can come over and right click on your entry and you can click on process explorer and that's going to open up process explorers right from sys internal so you can do further investigation so now you can see how having the uh, sys internal suite becomes very useful right because some tools call or use information generated from other tools and it's super easy to access so i'm just going to close this uh, come from here and then uh, that's how you can use that right so if you want to use if you want to look at your um, Microsoft um, um, files you could do that in there and you have all that information the other um, tool that I wanted to show you and it's not anything new when it comes to the information that it shows it's just how useful it is is TCP view now, again, if you are into networking, uh, system administration, and even security, this is a very powerful tool. Yes, it is true that like most of the sys internal tools, they run at the local level. It's not that you're going to be running this and you're going to see everything in the entire network. But when you are troubleshooting, when you are monitoring, most likely you are focused on one specific thing one specific task and this is one of the tools that you would use on that spe specific device server or or computer and this is not something just for security reasons you could use this for network troubleshooting reasons too so um, TCP view is going to show you the details listing for all TCP and UDP ports and the corresponding stage for that specific uh, session. Uh, this is um, similar to what you would see using uh, netstat, which is a very useful uh, Windows command. Right, if we come down here. <clears throat> Then you would use nestad and then you could either do you know specify the port minus p you could do tcp or udp or minus a it's gonna be it's gonna be everything so let me just do this i did didn't type something right so what is it so it is uh, p and why didn't it show probably because it has to be capitalized yeah, it has to be capitalized. So the, it is the same information, or some of the same information, but by by using TCP view, number one, you're gonna see in, in a graphical interface, and number two, you're gonna be able to interact with the other tools within sys internals, and number three, you're gonna have more information available to you, and it's gonna be easier to access. So as you could see here, if I go up to um, the top of the screen, let I'm going to stay on the command line for one second um, using uh, netstat. So the uh, default uh, columns that I have is protocol, local address, foreign address, and state. This is the state of the TCP session in this case because I'm using TCP. There are many different TCP states. You have uh, the most common are listen, establish, close, fin, and there are way more than that. I, if you do a search for RFC 793, 
that's the official document that is going to show you all the TCP states and what it means as you can see I have time wait and you have established and th th there are more but I just ended that so that is same information you're going to see here on TCP uh, view right where you're going to have the uh, process name the ID in this case I am looking at everything right like as you could see here I'm using uh, TCP view to show me anything on TCP version 4 and 6 and UDP 4 and 6 in my case I know in this case for this video and for testing purposes that I don't need to see anything on version 6 of TCP or UDP so I'm gonna disable that so all I'm left is with TCP and UDP but if I'm troubleshooting something and I know that it's a t it could that it could be a TCP issue there's no reason for me to have any U UDP information on my screen so I just can disable it from here and I'm gonna be left just with TCP um, we can spend hours just on this topic and going over how processes work and the process IDs and how it ties to, to the processes and the applications but I'm not gonna go there I'm just gonna give you the overall view of it and then we could expand in futures as I do more adv advanced videos but once you are here <clears throat> you're gonna see that you have your local address and the remote um, address and the remote port if you have that right uh, for instance Chrome as you know is um, is the web browser I have an established session meaning that I have an active connection and this is the process ID that is signed to this instance and you're gonna see that my uh, local address is my computer name in this case and then the remote address is the, uh, the the remote host that I'm connected to at any given time and then this is going to show that port that I'm being used and the executable uh, you can use this this is something that is again if you are a, um, a network administrator or a system administrator this is a very useful command and also if you are a security analyst this information comes handy because you're gonna see the state of the TCP session that is established and then once you collect that information you can do further investigation uh, there have been many times in which I have worked on systems that have been compromised and even though I don't know specifically what's happening at that specific time I use these tools I either use TCP view, TCP view or Nestat to, to to find out what what are those connections that the computer is established to and why and also if I have the computer off the network and the malicious files is trying to establish a connection to a remote host that also be uh, displayed there and I'll be able to investigate even further so um, one other thing that I want to show you is that you can uh, rearrange uh, the, the screen like only have the um, the tabs that you need right for that you would come to view then you would go to um, uh, well right here protocols and all that the toolbars now I want to come right from here connections who is properties now that I'm looking for actually probably it was the previous version of it that allowed me to select the columns it's interesting I don't see that from here right you, you don't see an option to uh, to select the columns huh all right so just have the information that is useful to you so in this case uh, n n you know having the state 
the local and especially the remote port and the remote address that's gonna help you in your troubleshooting um, and monitoring uh, process in your network uh, the other great thing that it allows you to do and again this is when you have um, the, the suite is that you can do further investigation for instance if you click here you right click and you go to process property that's going to show you the application and the process and then from here if you click on explorer that's going to take you to the directory where that application is so again this is something useful when you are troubleshooting and doing uh, malware investigations, right? Th this is one of the tools that is going to allow you to collect the proper information in your system. Uh, okay, so we got that. And lastly, if you click on this little green flag, that's going to allow you to select the um, state of the TCP set, um, connection right so in this case I am gonna if, if I want to do for instance like what's listening right now unestablished all right so I'm gonna select this too I'm gonna click on OK oh well, actually <laughs> all of them right now are established and the listening mode so let me change that to um, to just uh, listen mode and as you could see, I am listening. And once the connection is established, it's going to move into established. So right now, I have all this. Of, as you know, like this is super useful. As you can see here, I have um, I'm listening on 3389. So 3389 is the default RDP port for remote desktop connection. So since I don't have an active connection to my system right now it's listening mode so you th this is what you would use in your troubleshooting uh, for troubleshooting purposes just understand what is happening in your network what's listening and then you can say you know what Th there's no reason for me to have this in listening mode so you can close the port and secure your system so um, these are just two simple tools in the um, sys internal suite i know that i just skimmed through right it's not that we went deep into the configuration and how to use them in real world scenarios but we're gonna get there so in the meantime keep keep exploring keep testing uh, keep experimenting with these tools and and see how you can apply them into your system. Again, if you found this video useful, just click on the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I will talk to you on the next video.